Hello guys, how are you doing today? Uh, this is gonna be an introductory lecture uh, to try to define what moment of inertia is and what is the what are some of the applications for moment of inertia. So let's start this show. There you go. Moment of inertia. And of course my name you know is Ricardo Zori. Okay, so before defining what moment of inertia is, let's let me try to first uh, go on and tell you some of the applications for moment of inertia. And some of the applications for moment of inertia can be seen in any construction. I'm referring to construction, but I can refer to any particular discipline also. The first thing, the first important thing is that uh, whatever you saw before in previous courses was moment of inertia of masses or mass moment of inertia. This is moment of inertia for areas. So it's different than the one that you saw, even though you know it keeps some uh, relation between both of them. So what is, uh, today we're gonna try to define what moment of inertia of area is and determining the moment of inertia by integration. This is not gonna be done in this video, but I posted like 10 maybe videos on how to do that, starting from very, uh, simple shapes like right? rectangle with respect to centroid, rectangle with respect to base. So go to the channel and look at the videos that I posted for that. But as you can see, not all the shapes on all of the elements have the same shape and that should obey not only for aesthetic reasons, that should obey to something else. Applications, more applications. You see this element here? Why this element? Why do you build an I beam instead of building a completely a solid beam like that? Think. That's it. I heard you. That's a good one. Because it's heavier if you build it completely. But only because it's heavier. Heavier means more material. More material means more money. So this structure, if we can build something like that, and it's not because it looks beautiful, it's because it's lighter. Lighter, in the case of a steel, means less material, and usually in the case of uh, other applications, less material means less money, L cheaper. On top of that, if this is a beam that is working, I don't know, here, in this part, and you're gonna put it there, just imagine how heavy that should be, how heavy the column should be, and how heavy, how big the foundations of this structure should be to carry that weight. So if we can come with a different shape that basically is gonna resist the same, I go for it. It's cheaper, it's better, it's lighter, it's gonna make the structure look beautiful also. Let's go for that. That's why we don't use the solid rectangulars, for example, sections or square or circulars. Another example, you see all of those beams over there, all of those elements, they are hollow. Why? That's because of the moment of inertia. So what moment of inertia is? I'm gonna start with the definition that most of the books do about moment of inertia. I'm not saying that's my definition, I'm not saying that's the definition that I like, but I'm gonna show you that definition. And most of the textbooks starts like saying, consider a plate submerged in a liquid. Okay, this is a liquid, this is the plate, the plate is submerged below the liquid, of course, and this is the axis of reference at this point. Now, it says the pressure of a liquid at a distance y below the surface, at a distance y below the surface, is given by pressure equals gamma, which is the specific weight or the unit weight of the liquid, multiplied by that depth. You know that. We have discussed that before. You know that from physics also, and this is the pressure at any point, where weight is the specific weight of the liquid. Perfect. Now, it says the force of the area, dA, at that point, you remember what is pressure, right? Pressure is force divided by area. So if we want to calculate now what is the effect of that pressure in a differential of area, that's gonna be a differential of force. So the differential of force is pressure times differential of area. Now, we also say uh, that, well, we didn't say, but if we want to calculate the moment of that force with respect to that point over there, it's gonna be moment is gonna be equal to force times distance, so it's gonna be y r cross f or y times the f. As you can see here, 
but at the same time we say that the F is pressure, pressure times the A and pressure is gamma Y so if we put this gamma Y here we have gamma Y DA and if we put that in here again in the here again then you have gamma Y DA multiplied by Y which will be gamma Y squared DA and if we want to calculate the overall force then we have to do the overall integral of that so it will be the integral of area of gamma y squared dA gamma is a constant I take it outside of the integral and then it says this sort of integral term also appears in solid mechanics when determining stresses and deflection and this integral term is referred as moment of inertia of the area of the plate about an axis so at this moment you should be able to define what moment of inertia is so tell me I'm gonna expect I'm gonna wait that definition in five seconds four three two one what happened I just explained it to you so next time somebody asks you for what moment of inertia is you're gonna start the definition by saying considering a submerged plate under a liquid and then the distance why no of course not that's not what moment of inertia is or that could be but it's, uh, this is not something that I understand so let's try to come up with our own definition what is moment of inertia so let's imagine for a moment that this is like a cliff that we have here and this is you and I have been changing these slides with time because the students keep telling me if you have to go from this side to that side what do I do and they say oh I jump okay perfect you jump those are 50 feet if you can jump 50 feet perfect do it you cannot jump obviously no then uh, you have a piece of wood that you're gonna build a bridge over there but this is 100 feet down well it doesn't matter I can come down and I can go up perfect do it now there is water I know how to swim that's what they say no problem swim now you have a shark in the water what do you do aha uh -huh. perfect now what you can do is building a bridge and you have two options option A or option B that's what you're going to do there which one would you use would you put the bridge is the same amount of material the same piece of wood the only difference you're gonna put it like that or you're gonna put it like that that's it and then everybody of course say option A option B and then you put option B over there and let's test your option this is you there you go that's what happened to you now if you select the other option which is this one Ash music now you have a shark dieting okay now option A option B I know why you say option A because you say option A oh no I have more surface that I can walk through yeah I know but you don't read I mean this says that this is 20 inches here and 10 inches I think that you can work you can walk perfectly in 10 inches 10 inches is something like that and that's perfectly doable walk over there now on the other hand you should know that if you have something like that that's gonna this is gonna happen diving boards are built like that for a reason right you unless you don't want this deflection to happen if you're gonna if you want to have something rigid like those uh, high altitude uh, jumping diving boards then you do something like that and then from here it's not gonna have deflection and you jump to the pool but if you really want to have some deflection and recoil then you put it like that so yes this was the most convenient shape to build that bridge and not get eaten by a shark at the same time now based on this can you tell me what moment of inertia is by the way moment of inertia remember we are not gonna say every time moment of inertia of plane area because that's the way this part is gonna be also uh, included in our moment of inertia so when we say moment of inertia we don't talk about moment of inertia of masses don't worry you will have time to work with moment of inertia of masses when you go to dynamics again 
if you really love it. But right now, it's going to be moment of inertia for area. So moment of inertia of areas is also called second moment of area because the first moment of area is the centroid. And is the area moment of inertia also, or is the second area moment? Those are uh, other names for the same uh, moment of inertia property. So what is moment of inertia? Remember what we did. We had the same area. We didn't change the area. Did we change the material? No, nope. it's the same material. We just changed position, and that was you walking through uh, both situations. And you walking through both situations, what was causing was a deflection at this point. So the fact that we didn't change the shape and just the organization of the shape, or yes, we somehow change the shape with respect to a certain point, that makes that only a property that depends on the geometry of the shape, or the geometry, better say, of the cross-sectional area. So it's a geometrical proper of a structural element, not a structural element, yeah, structural element that shows how the rest of the area is placed or distributed with respect to a certain point. Because here, for example, if you consider the center for saying something, and I'm advancing a little bit and going uh, ahead of what it's supposed to be, let's say the centroid and we calculate something that is called centroid moment of inertia or centroidal moment of inertia, then of course you have this part, these fibers are farther away from the centroid than these parts here are farther away from the centroid. So then this property reflects somehow the rest of the area distributed with respect to an axis, but the most important part is that that property actually measures how strength that section is with respect to bending, deflection, and also stress. That could be a, a definition for moment of inertia, which is understandable, let's say it in that way. Now, if you want to go to the mathematical formulation, of course, you can find that the moment of inertia is going to be the integral of y squared dA with respect to the x-axis. With respect to the y-axis, is going to be the integral of x squared dA. And then you have something which is called polar moment of inertia, which is just with respect to any radial axis like that, and is r squared dA. The units, as you can see, are units of length to the fourth because that's what we have here. And what for is used, uh, I mean, this is not about uh, that. This is not what we're going to do now. But yes, I don't like to teach something without telling you what for is used. So you remember when we were saying P divided by area, and we were working with trusses, and I told you, oh, this is a stress, force divided by area. Yes, that's true when you have a concentric force like that, if this is P, and you have a cross-sectional area here, here, this is P divided by this cross-sectional area, that's the stress. Now, when you have a situation like this, and then you have the same beam, let's say this beam like that, and that beam is bending in this way, you're going to have some compression here in the bottom fibers and tension in the top fibers, which is going to cause a stress also. But that stress is a flexural stress. And that stress is, a, and you will learn how to do this definition, uh, how to formulate and how to derive this formula in mechanics of materials later. But the stress is M times C divided by I. M is the moment. Mo moment, remember moment diagrams? Now everything is connecting, everything is time. So let's say that you have this here, and this is a distributed load, W. Here, W, and this is a distance, L. And then you build your shear diagram, shear moment diagram. Remember, the uh, reaction here should be WL divided by 2, WL divided by 2. So this is WL divided by 2, central point, WL divided by 2. And then you build the moment. This is your shear diagram, the moment diagram. Come on, don't tell me to don't ask me to explain you this. You already know this. We did it so many times and you learn it. 
positive decreasing, positive decreasing, negative increasing, negative increasing, maximum moment because the shear is zero. This is the moment. This is the moment. Or any of these moments are the ones that you put in that formula. What is C? Well, C I obviously is the moment of inertia. And C is another property which depends also on the geometry. When, you, when you're talking about, for example, a rectangular section B times H, like that, uh, this moment of inertia is considered with respect to this centroid, and that C is the distance to the external fibers. That will be C, this distance from here to here. A moment of inertia of the rectangle is that. Now, you want to know why this, if we put the section in this way, like that, or we put it in this way, why this resists more than that? Because as I prove and I show it to you later in, pre in, for in next videos, the moment of inertia with respect to a rectangular section is bh cubed divided by 12. Now if you consider this to that, and you say this is b and this is h, then this is 10 and this is 20 inches for the example that I did before, then you're going to have here something that is 10 times 20 to the third divided by 12. But if you put your beam like that, then this is going to be 20 and this is going to be 10. And the moment of inertia is going to be 20 times 10 to the third divided by 12. Look, this 20, the high, is to the third. Look, in this case, 10 is to the third. This is way bigger than this. If this is way bigger than this and goes in the denominator, the stress in the material is going to be smaller. And that's why that beam didn't crack and you weren't eaten by a shark. So next time, next time that you don't want to get eaten by a shark, remember moment of inertia. Please keep watching the videos and, and see all the definitions that I did, all the derivations for the geometrical shapes and also composite areas and parallel axis theory. And those are the videos that come next. Have a good day, guys.